This video is a walkthrough of an exam question about the third required practical of AQA A-level chemistry. Before I walk you through how to answer this question, pause the video and have a go at answering it for yourself. This chemical reaction in particular between the sodium thiosulfate sulfite and the dilute hydrochloric acid is probably already really familiar to you because it's one of the few that we can do in the school or sit form laboratory that involves a change in turbidity. So you would probably have used this reaction at GCSE as part of the concentration required practical. And then again, it's really likely that you did this particular reaction as part of your practical endorsement. So it's a nice example of a reaction where you can use one over time as a surrogate for rate rather than monitoring the rate of reaction using a continuous method. But even if you encounter a question like this with a reaction that you haven't actually done for yourself, you can still go through the process of describing how to set it up and you're going to cover the exact same points. In this investigation, we're looking at the impact of temperature on the rate of reaction. So our independent variable is the temperature of the reagents, and we need to talk about how we're going to change that. The dependent variable, well, we're basically using one over the time taken for the reaction to finish as a surrogate for rate. And then in terms of control variables, we need to talk about the fact that we're always using the same volumes of solutions and the same concentrations of solutions. So to begin with, I want to make it clear that I am going to change the independent variable. So I'm going to start by talking about how I would use water baths to heat up separate samples of my two reactants to a bunch of different temperatures. You don't have to specify the temperatures, but if you do, you should be specifying more than two of them. And actually for this reaction in particular, we don't really want the temperature to go above 55 degrees because it's producing a load of sulfur dioxide gas and the hotter it is, the faster it's going to produce that. And sulfur dioxide, of course, is not great if you're breathing it in. So that's a bit of a safety concern. I'm also going to specify um, that I'm going to determine some volumes for these. I can, of course, just say later, do it again using the same volumes, but sometimes it's just a bit easier to include a volume within your method. Um, and again, because of the production of the sulfur dioxide gas, it's fairly typical that we would do this experiment on a bit of a micro scale to try to minimise the amount of that gas that's being produced. Now, when you did this practical at GCSE, you almost certainly drew a cross on a piece of paper using a pencil and um, put your conical flask on top of that or your McCartney bottle on top of that um, and waited until you couldn't see the cross anymore. So that's still a perfectly valid method. But at A-level, you might also have been fortunate enough to have access to a light sensor, in which case you can predetermine a level um, of light transmission. And once the transmission falls below that, um, then we say that the reaction has finished because the same amount of sulfur has been produced. Then, of course, we need to actually add our reactants together. So we're going to add our first sample of hydrochloric acid to the sodium thiosulfate. And of course, as we do that, it's important that we say that we will start the timer. So then we're going to wait until either the cross has disappeared, if we're going for the low tech method, or if we were using a colorimeter, then you're waiting for a predetermined point where you've set the absorbance to a certain amount or the transmission to a certain amount. And whichever one of those you're doing, you're going to record how long it took for that reaction to be completed. And then we need to talk about changing the independent variable. So we're going to repeat the experiment using the water bath at 35 degrees, but keeping the temperatures, um, sorry, changing the temperature, but keeping the volumes and the concentrations of the solutions the same. Then for each one of these, um, we're going to calculate a value of one over time for the temperature. And we're doing that as a surrogate measure of the rate of reaction. And then once we've got that information, we can plot a graph of um, the temperature on the x axis against one over time on the y axis. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope that you're now feeling a little bit more confident about answering questions about this third required practical of AQA A level chemistry. If you are finding the videos useful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-level chemistry content coming soon.